Now, what about HER2 positive disease? Yelena, yes. what would you, you know, tell us a little bit about HER2 positive disease and, and how you use the treatment in the metastatic setting. Do you jump off the bandwagon and do it with full FOX? And if you do, how do you dose it? It's sure. a very common question. Or do you use it, as Ian was alluding to, with maybe the big whack a la toga? Okay. Well, um, so for her two, uh, her, her trastuzumab was FDA approved uh, based on the combination with capecitabine and cisplatin. Biologically, I don't believe that capecitabine and cisplatin is any different from 5-FU and oxaliplatin. It, there's, the backbone is similar, that there shouldn't be any interaction, uh, for example, with, uh, you know, uh, bio, biologically. So uh, if a patient is not going on a first-line study, uh, then uh, generally I do use it with full FOX, and I dose trastuzumab every other week uh, with 6 mg per kg uh, bolus, you know, uh, loading dose, uh, followed by 4 mg per kg. Uh, with um, every other week uh, full fox and it's well tolerated um, and uh, you know we've we use it uh, standardly there's no uh, level one evidence certainly um, to support it but but I, I in in my practice it's commonly done and here's a very important question one I get from a lot of referring physicians I have a patient with locally advanced disease who I found out is her two positive should I give them trastuzumab mm -hmm. What do you say? <laughs> clinical trial, of course. That's right. <laughs> and what is available to you in terms of clinical trial? Well, uh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> so most of the clinical trials are going on through the cooperative groups within the United States right so now. So we had and RTOG think, yeah. 1010, which okay. was the uh, carbotaxel. So it's the cross plus mm. minus TRAS. That's completed, but there are um, several trials that are in planning, uh, and I know there are some uh, yeah, ongoing so, in the U.S. So, yeah, in UK. Europe, we actually have a study called Innovation, uh, which is run by the ULTC group, and essentially, yes, for HO2 positive, they get randomized to uh, cisplatin plus fluoropamidine. Usually, we use capecitabine, uh, and one of the arms is the additional trantuzumab to uh, XP regimen, and the other arm is trantuzumab and pertuzumab adding to that, and it's given perioperatively. So they give it before operation, surgery, and then after operation for the HER2 positive um, patients. So, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, I think there's a big impulse um, to use trastuzumab in the locally advanced setting, um, taking a cue from breast cancer where the hazard ratios in the adjuvant setting are 0 0.65, 0 0.6. Um, which we've never achieved in gastric cancer or gastroesophageal cancer, unfortunately. So, um, you know, I, I understand that there's a, uh, um, a significant drive. However, I think, you know, as we're, you know, uh, learning uh, and treating all these patients, we also realize that um, HER2 positive gastric cancer is not the same thing as HER2 positive breast cancer. Um, the benefit with trastuzumab is not the same. The mechanism of resistance is not the same. And, um, you know, for esophageal cancer, you're radiating the chest, and with uh, the use of Herceptin, uh, you know, have to worry about safety and things like that. So I think that outside of a clinical trial, uh, which is probably always the right answer, um, you know, I would just, you know, word of caution of using a HER2-directed therapy in the neoadjuvant or adjuvant setting. 